What's up everybody, Troll here. Today we are going to deep dive to Entity Framework Core and to learn how to work with functions using Entity Framework Core. We have table valued functions, scalar functions. For this tutorial, I am going to explore and show you how to work with table valued functions. You will understand how to create your table valued functions from Entity Framework Core and also how to consume information from the created functions, especially table valued functions using Entity Framework Core. So what are you waiting for? Let's dive in. Our purpose here is to migrate function creation to Entity Framework Core, but my preferable way is always to create your functions, your complex queries using Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio or any type of ID you're using for SQL Server. First, create your queries here and then map it to your C Sharp code because they implementing them in Visual Studio is a little bit complex because you are providing a string value, but here we have highlighting or other type of intelligence mechanisms that will help us to create our queries easily. I will use our adventure work. You need to install adventure works in a version that's completely okay. Even you can use any database, but at least try to have a little bit more complex data structure to grab some information from different tables. I will use two tables, the sales, sales order detail and special offer table. So let's first see what we have here. We have sales dot sales order detail. In our sales order detail, we have tons of information. I will take career tracking number, unit price information, the sum of unit price information based on special offer ID. And also we have, as you can see, we have special offer ID. This is a reference to a special offer table. It is also under sales schema. So this is our special offer. So, so let's see what we have here. I will also take a description and maybe discount information from here. So let's implement our query. I'm going to provide inner join sales that special offer as so on so that special offer id so that special offer id and store is not okay for us let's specify the exact column names i am going to specify unit price the only unit price plus i'm going to use window fun uh, functions here so um, uh, this is going to be a sum so that unit price this is our over partition by sales so that special offer ID. Great, we have partitioning here. Okay, let's use our total sum. Great. I'm also going to take category and as we mentioned, let's take maybe the discount PCT. That's great. Let's execute our query. So we have all the required information and the only missing information here is let's take our special offer ID to see the exact special offer IDs. So we have, you see special offer ID. This is our total sum because 31 plus 17 with uh, the mm, uh, precise information is going to be 48. Great. Now I'm going to provide a wrapper over it to create our function. This is going to be our table valid functions because we function because we are going to return a table. So I am going to specify so that special offer ID from special offer ID. This is our argument. So let's specify this argument. Create or alter function ufn get sales info and this is my special offer id as integer and returns table as return yeah we are going to return a table great let's execute Great, and 
let's call our function to see if everything is working. I'm going to provide, for example, five. We should have two information for five. Great, let's provide seven. Great, everything is working. Let's just drop our function to create it using entity framework core. Drop and let's see. Yeah, now we have table valued function here. Let's explore how to create this function from entity framework core. So here is our Visual Studio. We have just generated a .NET Core Web API template. So you see in our controllers, we have weather forecast controller. I'm going to create a new controller here. Let's create our controller. I will call it sales controller. Our sales controller will have two endpoints, one for returning table valid information and the other one returning for scalar. Let's first try to understand our table valid. So I'm going to provide our root and this is our api controller great let's inherit from controller base this is our constructor i'm going to inject my db context directly here because the focus here is not to provide to show you the exact architecture the purpose here is to show you how to work with functions using entity framework core that's why i'm just going to create a new folder here this is our database Okay, database, let's right click, add class, and this is going to be my sales DB context. Okay, context, great. Now let's go to tools, package manager console, and let's uh, install package Microsoft entity framework core.sql server this is for our db context stuff so let me just copy it from here because we'll also install our tools let's see this is our sql server great install package Entity framework core tools this is for our add migration update database great let's inherit from db context this is our db context and for using dependency injection we have db context options sales db context db context options base db context options great let me remove this stuff from here voila and we need to return some information because we have uh, some rows in our table. Let me just uh, see. We have carrier tracking number, unit price, we have total unit price, etc. type of fields. That's why we need to create our DB set information. So right click, add. This is our models folder. Right click, add class. I'm going to call it sales offer. Okay. Great, so public string. First, let's start from carrier tracking number. Great, carrier tracking number gets set. Okay, and we have here unit price. Let's go to our public decimal unit price get set. Okay. So we have total sum, it is also going to be decimal, public decimal total sum, we call it total sum, but that's okay. We have category, public string category. What else? We have discount PCT, this is going to be our decimal, public decimal discount, great and we have special offer id this is public integer special offer id i guess that's all we don't have any key you will specify that we don't have we are not using a key okay so let's go to our db context here and we need to override our own model creating Okay, for on model creating, I'm going to specify model builder. We have the entity, 
this is going to be a sales offer. Okay, let's remove this stuff and let's add our, oops, sorry, let's add our reference here and let's specify that we don't have key. Has no key. Great. So, this is our has no key, but before specifying my DB set here, I'm going to show you how to migrate your uh, function to your SQL server. Okay, so we don't need right now DB set. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to create empty migration tools, Nugget package manager. Okay, and add migration um, migrate SQL script okay let's build it it should generate an empty migration file so let's wait for it okay so we don't have of course database stuff so let's add our um, connection string great this is our connection string this is going to be adventure works db context this is my server i will specify server with that this is our initial catalog adventure works 2019 great and we have trust server certificate equal to true let's see i hope everything is okay and let's go to programs yes of course for the builder services and db context this is our sales db context let's right click sales db context let's use our sql server and let's take adventure works db context great now we have all the required information at least to generate our data okay let's generate our empty migration script so you see we have a sales offer because we have specified that we have entity uh, so i'm just going to remove it and let's go to our db context and remove this line that's all let's tools yeah tools is here so let's run migration again it should generate uh, for us empty migration that's great and let's specify that migration builder and this is our um, sql query so you see we are able to specify sql query like create function etc from here so let's go to i guess we already dropped but let's do it again great let me just copy this script from here and what i'm going to do i'm going to specify add and paste it here and here we are you can easily format it but that's completely okay and for the drop i am going to specify migration this is our um, dropping function so let's specify sql drop function and this is our ufn get sales info that's great so let's again try to see this function is not working but after migration we are planning to see the working sql okay so update database let's hit enter and wait okay great so you see migration is done let's go execute and here we are everything is working that's how we are migrating our query from entity framework to sql server now we are able to migrate our scripts to transact sql but the main purpose here was to not ju just migrate but also retrieve information so let's see how to use this function in our case our 
Entity Framework course allows you to retrieve function information with iQueryable. So I will specify iQueryable. This is our sales offer. It should return sales offer. And we have the name. Let's go and take our name from here. This is our name, okay, and it is going to take only one argument of her ID and from expression and let's call our get sales info. Well, that's pretty much all how we are calling our function. Of course, we need to specify some additional data, but let's see how we are doing it. Here we need to specify, of course, I forgot to specify like this. Great. Now we don't have any key. We should specify that we don't have a key because when you run this query, it will fail with no key. And the only thing here is we need to specify our mapping to the function. And you can easily do it using has db function. So you see has db function, we are using type of sales db context get method. We are specifying our method with only one single argument. This is our params, which is going to provide only one single argument. That's great. And now let's go to our sales controller. As I mentioned before, we are not going to build some sort of architecture or other type of clean code or better writing mechanisms. I'm just going to specify DB context directly. So private read only sales DB context. Great. Let's specify our sales DB context, sales DB context, sales DB context. This is our HTTP get, of course, for HTTP to get I will specify a sales offer ID and public I action result get let's specify our sales offer ID and let's call sales DB context you have fun and this is our sales offer ID and return okay with response so I'm going to use that to list asynchronously okay public async task great get sales info asynchronously this is our sales data and let's return our sales data let's format it great and let's run it this is awaitable of course let's run our application and see if we are able to retrieve data so i'm adding the breakpoint here let's wait and let's go to our local host okay version one this is our sales and i'm going to specify for example five let's hit enter and let's wait this is our sales. We have, sorry, this is going to be API, hit enter. And here we are. We have sales with two information. Let's hit continue. And we are able to get two information. Let's specify seven. It should provide more information. We have 137. Great. And here we are. That's how we are mapping our function to database and that's how we are retrieving information from our function.